we have a workout. We have a workout. We shout it out. We don't fight it out. We shout it out. Oh, y'all didn't get there, did you? So y'all come to church for a battle. We don't come to church for a battle. We come to church to praise the Lord. And anything, anything we got going on, we know he'll work it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a firm believer that God can do anything. Problem you can't fix, you need to take it on to the Lord. Come to the house. But anyway, I thank the Lord for allowing me another opportunity to come before you to give you just a little bit of what God has given to me. I'm trying to find a phone here. I hear something. It must be my workout tone going on. Yeah, it is. It's okay though. Stay spiritually fit and physically fit. Amen. But anyway, I thank God for allowing us to gather together one more time. It won't be before you long, as some of you already know. Um, but I thank the Lord for the opportunity just to speak a word to our union. Yeah. Let us thank God for that. Yeah. Turbulent times are around us, yeah. they don't have to be in the church. The enemy can't get in until he finds somebody who's going to unlock the door. Jesus said, woe to that person through whom see and come. But I thank God. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, I'm going to teach a little bit. And God willing, I'll rise to the level of preaching in just a few minutes. But it won't be before you all, maybe 15 minutes. God willing. Let us go to the book of Luke. And we will read down to the 10th verse from 1 to 10 in the 5th chapter of the book of Luke. I'll be reading from the NIV. They say a little bit different from what you're reading. But for those of us that can, let us stand in the presence of the Lord. Those that cannot, just stand in your heart. I have a reference to the word. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the edge, at the water's edge, two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, mm -hmm. and asked him to put out just a little from the shore. Jesus. Then he sat down and he talked to people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Mm -hmm. Simon answered, Master, mm -hmm. we work hard all night long yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and haven't caught anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. All right. oh, yes. When they had gone, when they had done so, they caught such a large number mm -hmm of fish that the nets began to break. Yes. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at, his, at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Father, we're thankful for your love and your mercy and your grace. We ask, Lord God, that you speak a word, dear Heavenly Lord. Bring it out plain that we can understand where we are and what to do. This vessel of clay stand before you, Lord, ready. Ready, Lord, for your word and your call. So here I am. Lord, I ask that you do what you said you would do. Fill you up. When I speak, yes, Lord. Okay, the Lord God may hear from you. Yeah. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. First of all, I want to I want to teach a little bit, but my main thought will be in fellowship, I can feel my help. 
In fellowship, I can feel my help. It's kind of an odd story to me that Luke seems to want to relate to us. It tells a story of fishing and telling them to move out a little bit far. But when you understand sometimes how Luke writes and some of the gospel writers, there's a story inside the story. I mean, for example, we can look at when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. The Bible says he was there and he was talking to Moses. And he was talking to Elijah. But none of us ever stopped to think, now why did it happen? Why you got to talk to them? Because Luke is wanting to tell us the story that Moses stood for the law. And Elijah stood for the prophets. Both the law and the prophets bear witness to Jesus. And when Peter said, Lord, can we build a tabernacle? The voice came from heaven and said, hear ye him. In other words, in these last days, God only speaks through his son. So Luke tells a story within a story mm -hmm. so that whoever's reading the story understand what he's talking about of his time. Right. Mm -hmm. There's an example when Jesus is on the cross and they talk about how that there were four soldiers there mm -hmm. and how that Jesus' garment was torn in four pieces. Mm -hmm. But then he had another garment that was seamless, one mm -hmm. piece of three. Mm -hmm. All the way down, top to bottom. And why do you want us to know that? Mm -hmm. Because on the surface of things, there are di diversity. There are diversities of gifts in the body of Christ. But that one seamless garment represents that we're all one body. Yes. Right. Yes. But he wants us to know that. Sometimes we get caught up on people that can do things a little bit different than us. But while all along, we work for the same Lord. So I just want to teach for a moment about this Luke. Now Luke, wondered why he used the word in verse 7, he says that he signaled for his partners. And then in verse 10, he reiterates again that James and, and James and John was his partners. But in the Greek, he uses two different words. In the first words, he, he used uh, metokis, which is a Greek word that means a participant, a partner, a companion, um, someone that shares in something. But in the lateral verse, in verse 10, he uses the word koinonia. Mm -hmm. All right. which is the word for fellowship. All right. It's a deep, intimate, personal thing that he's talking about, mm -hmm. how that they were in fellowship. Mm -hmm. I think that Luke really gives us a good picture of our union association. Mm -hmm. I really do. All right. I think that Luke wants us to understand that uh, Peter and Andrew had their own boat, mm -hmm. right. much like the local church got their own authority. All right. All right. They owned their own boat. Mm -hmm. And within their own boat, they got their own fellowship. All right. All right. All right. But whenever Jesus gave the commandment to go and they began to throw out the net, it said that they called for partners. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a perfect picture of our union association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of work. Sometimes some of us churches got a lot of work and it's overwhelming. So what we have to do is call our partners. Mm -hmm. Those that share in the ministry with us. Mm -hmm. Those that call on the same Lord that we call on. That's in our union. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can do what? We can work together right. to yeah. catch the fish. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Jesus outlined it. The mission of the church is clear. Mm -hmm. He said, go and teach. Yes. He said, go on out and cash your net. Right. So Luke is trying to demonstrate to us how unions and associations and individual churches actually work together. All right. How they can be autonomous on one end mm -hmm. and how they can share on the other end. On. Having all Amen. things in common. No big eyes, no little views. Everybody, right. they just work as anything. I just believe that. And I believe there's hope for our union the same way. Yeah. Once we understand what our roles are mm -hmm. and the authorities that we have, once we get over these conflicts of interest that we have and understand that Jesus' only yes. interest is worthy of pursuing, yes. then and only then will we be able to surround That's the work right. and say, come on and help me All because right. I got some fish coming from my, my neck that I can't hold. Isn't that something? Luke just simply want to tell us that. Mm. That the church got to stay on his mission. Your mission ain't building buildings. Mm. Come on, Pastor. Oh my God. Your mission ain't feeding folk. 
Come on. That's not your mission. Come on. Now you might build a few buildings and you might feed a few folk along the way, but your mission is to save souls. To cast your net. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's your mission. And anytime we do anything, whether we feed, build, or whatever it is, if it does not reach to that level of catching the fish, if it don't reach to the level of spreading the gospel, we need to abandon it because it's the wrong mission. Jesus. Jesus. But Luke wants to tell us this in a nice way. Yeah. Jesus sending them out a little ways is remnants of what he told them in Matthew. Go therefore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have to work, wait to see the work. Mm -hmm. You've already been commanded to go. Yeah. All right. All right. So I was waiting to try to see some work and then go. <laughs> No, he already told you to go. Yeah, yeah. He'll bring the work. That's right, man. All you gotta do is go. Yeah. Stop being held up. Yeah. Stop arguing about stuff that don't matter. Yeah. 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 But it was so deep because Luke tells a story within the story. Uh -huh. We get lost in the story of the fizz and the 5,000 and all that. But there's a purpose behind why he didn't want to tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things he could have said about Jesus, but he told this particular story mm -hmm. for a reason. And you can see in this story how, that, as, as I said, Peter and Andrew own their own boat. Mm -hmm. Many of us are still worried about our own church. Yeah. <laughs> you have autonomy, that ain't nothing to be threatened by that. <laughs> Just because you partner up with another church don't mean you're threatened by your autonomy. Why? Right. Because we share in the same work. Yeah. 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 I'm going to preach a little bit. Yeah. 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 I'm going to preach this a little bit. Yeah. So the Lord called me. <laughs> so if you really want to know what, when we're talking about the fellowship, yeah. we're not talking about the building, we're talking about the body of believers. Yeah. Yeah. Acts tell you what that means. That means those that have devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. Yeah. Yeah. Those that have come together in prayer and fasting. Yeah. Those that have all things in common. Yeah. Those, that's the fellowship. Yeah. Where everything is in common. Everybody share all things. There's no big eyes yeah. to use. Yeah. I got this for me. You go get yours. There's yeah. none of that. Everything yeah. is in common. Yeah. 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 And so when we're talking about the union, we're talking about the fellowship. That's, all right. Right. that's really what we're talking about. The fellowship. And we're talking about the Mitachas. Those that have partnered up in the ministry to share in Christ. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Amen. so but God caught my attention, caught my attention to something within this. In verse 7 it says, and they signal their partners. All right. All right. And so this morning, as I said, I can feel my help. Mm -hmm. In fellowship, mm -hmm. yeah. I can feel my help. All right. All right. Yes. So <clears throat> Luke wants us to see that the disciples were stressed. They had done what Jesus said do, and all of a sudden the fish came. Mm -hmm. And the net began to, to break. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean you, you got to understand that it's not just a net. When you're working for the Lord, sometimes your patience begins to break. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you feel the stress of the work of trying to yeah. reach out and yeah. reach that one more soul that God got ready for well, you to reach. That, yeah. that sometimes your net begins to break.
body of Christ. Yeah. That God put a diversity of gifts yeah. in the body. Yeah. So that the spirit of God is manifested through those, those gifts. Yeah. He's present in the body through the gifts that you operate. Yeah. He's present in the body through the gift of wisdom, the gift of healing, the gift of preaching. He's in the body. And when those gifts are present and you get into fellowship, yeah. you can feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Because somebody in the body has got what you need. Oh, yeah. There's somebody in the body yeah. that God has placed with a gift that can do the thing that you need most. You know that you can go when you get into fellowship. Yeah. I heard the psalmist say when the system was broke, he searched the hills, but he couldn't find no help. Yeah. No help. But then the other
Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for that. Right now we're going to do our auxiliary reports. I'm going to call on the financial report. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We, the Finance Committee, submits the following report. The Deep River Missionary Baptist Union of the Deep River Missionary Baptist Association, date September 28th through the 30th, 2018, held at Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, where, Ken, where Reverend Kenneth Hedden is the pastor and the president. Fought for from the last session, $6,413.36. Church reportings, $382.50. Public offerings, $638. For total receipts from this session, $1,020.50. For disbursements, $185 for the union staff, $700 for the host church, $100 for the music ministry. For total disbursements of $985. The balance from this session, $6,448.86. Saving account certificates, $23,148.80. Total in treasury, $29,597.66. And this concludes our report. Thank you for that report. I don't know. That's good. Are there any corrections? Um, those of you who keep numbers. If not, then the report will go into our permanent records. Since the body agreed to have them, they've been received already because you, you read them. Right. So, um, hospitality. Hospitality. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. of Deep River wishes to thank Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Pastor Ken Hedden, for inviting the union this weekend. Okay, man. When we entered the doors, the hospitality of your members was just great. The prayers, the great preaching, and your music ministry was great. Praise. God. Thank you for your great coordination at Google. And to God be the glory for the things he has done. Let's have a rise and go to thanks or a bail off your hands.
Patricia in the house, Pastor Joseph Jones. He will bring us a word. Uh, it's from Black River Grove in Lillington. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. And on Saturday, uh, we will uh, reconvene uh, at uh, 9 o'clock and we will have the uh, board meeting uh, and then we will uh, have several uh, activities taking place. But one thing, uh, on Sunday we will have the, uh, uh, we will have communion. Uh, so we want all the pastors to wear uh, a bring a robe uh, so that we will uh, be part of that and ready for the uh, community service. So please bring, it don't matter what color, uh, again, just bring the robe uh, that all of us can uh, work together and to serve God's people. Again, we're looking forward to having all of you pray for us uh, that God will uh, make this a great success. Amen. say as a pastor, I have a lot of fun here with this congregation. Y'all, amen. 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 We have a lot of good times, we laugh, we joke, and it's all good because it's all fun. We learn together. And uh, so I thank God for them that um, he has uh, has given me a, a chance to continue on that journey. Uh, but I'm not afraid of fighting now, don't get me wrong. Amen. And, and, all, I, all that I tell you is what well, I can tell you is I'm nice. But uh, I'm just simply saying that even what God said has to say. Amen. And that's not that's not just for them. That's from here all the way down. There you go. And they know that because I tell them the same thing. You see me, hey, you say, hey, Pastor, that ain't right. Because I tell them that. Because it's their job to keep me on point, too. Amen, right? And so uh, we have a good time here. We really enjoy the Lord. And uh, I see a church that I previously pastored, some of the members here at Red Hill. And uh, I have fun there with my members there too. And uh, we still conversate back and forth. And uh, I love them as well. And I thank God 
that they made it. And all of the pastors and people who came to, to this union, thank God for your time out to sit amongst the fellowship. Because truly, as I preach, you really don't know the power of God until you get in fellowship. Amen. You know, I was at a funeral and the guy talking about, this used to be the church I went to. I said, what church you go to now? Oh, man, I go here, I go there, I go there. I said, man, let me tell you something. And I just met this guy. So let me tell you something. Your gift is no good unless it's grounded in the Bible. Because he gave you gifts for the, for the specific task of taking care of the body. So I don't care how good you can sing. Okay, I really think you can pray. If it 